Hello and welcome to i24 News Sports Daily Magazine with all the latest scores and stories from the world of sports. La Liga returned from the winter break with a victory for the champions. The fans at Anfield will soon have to get used to life without Steven Gerrard. And the new tennis season is already here with uh, some big names already in action. All that and much more coming up. Let's get started. We begin with a Spanish league that returned to action this weekend after a short winter break. Atletico Madrid was the first to take to the pitch and give the fans at the Atletico Calderon plenty of things to be happy about. Fernando Torres was still in the stands, but the team was doing just great against Levante without him. All three of their goals coming from headers. Antoine Griezmann did it twice, making it five goals for the French striker in the last two matches. Diego Godin added one more, and the Colchoneros win 3-1. Four more matches are held today in the Spanish league, including the one between Real Sociedad and Barcelona. On paper, it may look like an easy win for the Catalans. The rivals are ranked only 16th in La Liga and have won just three times this season. But two of these victories came against none others than Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid, meaning this team is not really afraid of the big names. If that's not enough, Barcelona has not won in its last four visits to Sociedad's home ground. They lost their last season, and therefore, Barcelona manager is expecting a very tough challenge. We have to bear in mind that they have been a rival the last four years. If we had last year's cup game, we drew two times and lost three to them. So they have good level and we have to go there and be focused. If we don't manage to be strong, the rival will manage to beat us in the game. I think it is a beautiful test for us. Now to England, where there has been a new and rather surprising appointment. Alan Pardew left his job as the Newcastle manager yesterday after more than four and a half years at St. James's Park and completed his switch to Crystal Palace. It may come as a surprise as the Magpies are currently 10th in the Premier League with 27 points, while Crystal Palace is in relegation zone and with 10 points less than Newcastle. Analysts say the main reason for the move, which may be seen as a downgrade for Pardew, is the tension between him and the fans at Newcastle who viewed him as no more than a yes-man for the disliked management. After the Christmas frenzy ended, the Premier League is out this weekend, FA Cup is played instead, Liverpool will face Wimbledon tomorrow, but that's not really what the fans are talking about. There's only one thing on people's minds in Anfield these days, it's the news that Steven Gerrard will be leaving the club at the end of the season. Michael Friedman looks back at the career of the man who will always symbolize Liverpool even when he doesn't play there anymore. He is the Liverpool prodigal son, raised, groomed, and taught from his childhood to wear the red jersey. Steven Gerrard has declared he will leave the club he played throughout his entire career. The 34-year-old has made 695 appearances and scored 180 goals for Liverpool. But more than anything, he's a local hero. The beloved midfielder's contract will expire at the end of the season, and although he did not decide where he will play next, he said this was one of the most challenging decisions of his life. He's had many managers throughout his time with the Reds, and Brendan Rodgers is very happy to coach the star midfielder. He's someone who deserves the utmost respect, and, and that's why I said in, in one of the last press conferences at the time when we were talking that what the guy's done in the game and, and how he is as a person, he deserves that time um, to make his decision. And, and the decision's purely at this time for, for him and his family. You know, he's been a, and is an iconic figure here at the club and always will be. Gerard has been the heart of the Liverpool team for over the past decade and showed his value to the club. His biggest achievement was winning the Champions League final in 2005 against AC Milan. But more than a hero in the Premier League, the poised striker captained England and won 114 caps for his country. But players do not last forever and eventually leave. Liverpool will have to look to the future and try and fill a very big pair of shoes. It's near on impossible to find a direct replacement for someone of that stature and, and quality. But we have to, you know, we have to continue with our work and have to continue to find the, the top players to come in and, as it, and perform for the club. 
An English legend, he has all the charisma to shine anywhere in the world. Like many other greats nearing the end of their careers, he eyes a move abroad to prolong his career. I can tell the supporters at the moment that it will be America. I'll be going to play in America, but you know, I'm not over the line with, with any team just yet. I'm close, and as soon as I know, I'll make the announcement. Now that Landon Donovan has retired from the LA Galaxy, the English media are speculating he will follow in David Beckham's footsteps and make a move to the West Coast. The 34-year-old appears to still have the hunger and desire for more. Although he's not getting any younger, he's not quite ready to hang up his boots. We'll have to wait and watch as he writes the next chapter after Liverpool. So the iconic Gerard will leave the Premier League in the summer. Someone else, a bit less iconic, left the Premier League this weekend. Four and a half years after leaving the French League for the Premier League, Hatam Ben Arfa makes the trip back. Ben Arfa played four seasons with Newcastle and was loaned at the beginning of this season to Hull City but struggled to find his place there. Now he moves to Nice and an 18 in an 18-month contract in the hope of regaining the form which made analysts call him in the past one of the best talents in French football. Tennis now in the 2015 season is already here. Andy Murray already has one title to his name this year, and it was much easier than expected. Murray was supposed to face world number one Novak Djokovic in the final of the Abu Dhabi Open, but Djokovic sent a message to the organizers that he's sick and unable to play, meaning Murray wins the title just before making the long trip to Australia for the Hopman Cup and later the Australian Open. Yeah, it's been a very good uh, first couple of matches. Um, I played a very tough one with Lopez the first day. Then yesterday against Rafa, I played uh, played very well, and you know it was a good start to the new year. Um, you know, and hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll keep getting better. And yeah, I go over to uh, Australia this evening to, to play my next event in Perth, and hopefully I can keep it going. With the final cancelled, the crowd had to do with the match for the third place, and it wasn't bad at all. Rafael Nadal and Stanislas Wawrinka faced for the honor. The Spaniard looking sharp on his return from injury. He took the first set in a tiebreak and was also in control in the second. Wawrinka, soon to defend his title in Melbourne, was always a step behind. Nadal wins the match 7-6 and 6-3. Andy Murray, as we have heard, is now heading to Perth for the Hopman Cup, which already started today. It's a mixed-gender tournament played on a country-by-country -country basis. The 2015 event started with the Czech Republic taking on Canada. The Czechs won the women's singles, Lucy Sarafova beat Eugenie Bouchard. The Canadians tied it with the men's singles with Vasek Pospisil, leaving Adam Pavlasek behind. And the deciding mixed doubles went the Czech Republic's way, with Pavlasek and Safarova winning in straight sets giving the Czech Republic the 2-1 victory in the opener. On the other side of Australia, some other big names are getting ready for their first tournament of the new year, the Brisbane Open. One of them is Roger Federer, who, against all predictions, had a very good run in 2014, winning some big tournaments and finally also adding the Davis Cup. But there's one thing he did not achieve last year, another Grand Slam trophy. The man who won 17 of these tournaments, more than any other player, would surely love to add number 18 this year, and he believes he can still do it. That's uh, the big hope I have, of course, you know, because it was a, overall a great season for me. I was consistent, I was playing positive, you know, attacking tennis the way exactly how I want to play, and I gave myself chances at, uh, at quite a few of the slams, you know, US Open, Wimbledon, and the Australian Open, so I hope that this this year now I can go that one step further because uh, being close is, is not quite good enough but it was overall a good season besides the slams. The slams were not bad but uh, for me a, a good year in slams needs to be a, as well a, a victory I guess. On to the women's side and world number one Serena Williams won the event for the past two years but chose to pass this time rather choosing to represent the United States in the Hopman Cup. Despite being the number one she struggled in Grand Slams last year winning only the U.S. Open. Despite that, one of her main opponents at the top thinks she is still the one to beat. Well, it's tough to say that someone's vulnerable when they're number one in the world. <laughs> um, I, despite some of the losses that she had last year, she still came through really strong at the end of the season, um, you know, prevailing at the U.S. Open and winning the season and championships. So she kind of found her ground towards the end of the year and, and 
you know, even though she's, as you say, 33 years old, she's still very strong and very powerful and, um, and has had so much experience, and that definitely shows when, when she plays on the court. NBA time now, and we go to a very entertaining match in Portland. Judging by the records, we could be looking at a potential NBA final here. The Atlanta Hawks are the best in the East. The Trailblazers are second best in the West. The home team started strong, scoring the first eight points, but the Hawks quickly reacted, and this is how you do it. The steal on one side, coast to coast by Paul Millsap, ending with a layup. The Hawks went on a 29-12 run to finish the first quarter up by nine. They continue to dominate the game after the break as well, leading by as many as 20 within the final period. Kyle Crover made sure they stay far enough. The Blazers made one final run, closing the gap to five, but that was as close as they would get. Atlanta wins for the fourth straight time. The score this time, 115 to 107. And while the Hawks continue to find success at the top, the troubles continue for the Knicks at the bottom. The team from the Big Apple has the second worst record in the league. And if that's not enough, they have to deal with the injury of their leading star Carmelo Anthony. It's not clear yet how bad he is, his knee injury. But coach Derek Fisher says at this point, there's no thought of sitting him down for the entire season. You know, we're all talking about what's best for him, what's best for the team. Uh, right now, it's just taking some rest and getting some recovery uh, for the foreseeable future in terms of maybe the next week or so. Uh, but not anything more than that has been discussed in terms of, you know, for the entire season. And so, uh, you know, I, I still feel strongly that if, you know, he or, or we as a, as a group feel that there's a need to do that, um, you know, I think we, we can get to a point where we'll make that decision. But at this point, we're nowhere near that. Cycling is a prestigious sport. Bicycles are also a very convenient way of transportation, but apparently there's a lot more to those two wheels, two pedals, and a chain. Designer bicycles are now becoming trendy. The prices are sky high, but that doesn't make them any less popular. Pedal Cheek is in the air, and luxury brand Hermes is one of the latest to turn cycling into a fashion statement. Eight months ago, Hermes launched Le Flaneur, and more recently, Le Flaneur Sportif. With a carbon fiber frame, a silent chain, and classic style, this bike costs a cool 8,000 euros. And Hermes is struggling to keep up with demand. Today, we're in line with the objectives we'd set. There was a real gap in the market that now, with our production in full swing, we're really trying to meet. In Tokyo, designer bikes can sell for 15,000 euros. One local artisan is using his experience in yacht manufacturing to create beautiful bicycles made from mahogany. My ancestors taught me how to manufacture boats, and now I'm using that knowledge to make bikes. I think it's the first time that the whole world recognizes Japanese talent in this area. That's why, even if it doesn't make me much money, I have to keep doing it. Back in Paris, bicycle sellers are finding another way of boosting sales by personalizing the accessories that every posh peddler needs, from leather saddlebags to hand-painted bells. What we can find are these pretty bells painted by hand in Japan, these little leather purses. These key rings in leather, a nice collection of lead cyclists painted by hand, like when we were children. Now like a car, a watch or a pair of shoes, the humble bicycle is evolving into a showcase for wealth and social status. The 2015 edition of the Rally the Car will set off today in Buenos Aires. The day before, the cars, the cars, bikes and drivers were presented to the fans in the Argentine capital. The 406 competitors were all present at the Plaza de Mayo for their presentation just the day before taking on the tough 9,000 kilometer road that will take them to Argentina, Bolivia and Chile. Last year's event was a Spanish success with Spaniards winning the motorcycle and four-wheel categories Nani Roma was the man who came in with a winning car. He hopes to do it again, but expects a very tough challenge ahead. 
The Dakar race are all difficult. Last year went well and it's behind us. Now we are starting from scratch again. So again, it's a difficult Dakar, a competitive Dakar, but we will try to have a good race and above all, if it's possible, fight for victory. And if you think that driving 9,000 kilometers through the desert is crazy, listen to this. Three athletes, two French and one Spanish, took off from Cape Horn in Chile on paddle boards on Friday with the goal of reaching Antarctica by arm power alone. The distance, only about 800 kilometers, and the temperature of the water is a nice and comfy three degrees. I have no idea how they intend to do it, but they will say they reach Antarctica in just 10 days. Hope they have a good cup of tea when they come. And that's it for us today. Thank you for watching. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.